Hello everybody and welcome back to another Oxen Academy video. In today's video we're going to be talking about dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis is used to relate quantities quantities of different units. Different units. And extremely important, not only for chemistry but other fields as well. It could be biology to even humanities, because we're always dealing with different quantities and units. We always want to converge onto an overall consensus to something that is more universal. You can think of dimensional analysis almost like multiplying fractions. If we take the expression 3 over 4 and we multiply that by 1 over 3, you can recall that we can cancel out the 3s in the numerator of the first equation, the first fraction, and the denominator of the second fraction, because in the end we're going to simplify it out. Anyway, because we have a value 3 and we're dividing that by 3 as well, we're able to cancel it out because it becomes 1 is to 1, which ultimately in this scenario would give us an answer of 1 fourth as we begin to multiply through the fraction itself. The same thing can be used when it comes to units. For example, if we have the unit conversions of centimeter is to meter multiplied by kilometer to centimeter, we can cancel out the centimeter in the numerator of the first fraction and the centimeter in the denominator of the second fraction because we have a centimeter value that we cancel out by centimeters which ultimately gives us a value in the form of kilometers over meters this all is good and dandy but how exactly can we write this and structure dimensional analysis in our equations dimensional analysis doesn't exactly use fraction bars or multiplication but is rather used sort of like a chart it looks something like this. In the top left box, we have our initial value. Initial value. And of course, this initial value is in terms of units as well, whether it be grams, kilograms, meters, or anything of the sort. In this case, let's take an example of 17 meters. But what would you put in the second set of boxes, and really boxes going on from here? In the following boxes, we put what is known as a conversion factor. Conversion factor. Conversion factors are factors or proportions that relate two sets of units. For example, 100 centimeters is to 1 meter. Notice how conversion factors aren't dependent on the initial value that we put in into our dimensional analysis problem. For example, we wouldn't say that 100, 1700 centimeters is equal to 17 meters because of the fact that we would input 17 meters, but we rather keep this original conversion factor of the base unit of 100 centimeters is to 1 meter. So how exactly would we input this conversion factor into the dimensional analysis table? Well, remembering the fact that we would have to cancel out units, in this case meters at the very beginning, by another set of meters, in this case what we find in the conversion factor, we have to make sure that a meters in the numerator is cancelled out by a meters in the denominator, meaning that as we add our conversion factor, it would look something like this, with 100 centimeters at the top and 1 meter at the bottom. When it comes to things such as cancelling out units, we can then cancel out the meters because of the fact that it's found in both the numerator and the denominator of our chart, giving a final answer of, in this case, as we multiply through Remember, as we don't use the multiplication symbol, rather the, the bars of the graph, we would get 1700, and then inputting the only unit that we have, centimeters, as it's found in the numerator of the, of the dimensional analysis table, and we multiply that by the quantitative result that we get. So let's take an example problem, a quick one that uses two conversion factors. Let's say that we have 10 meters. And we want to convert this into millimeters, but we don't know exact conversion between meters and millimeters. However, we do know two main things. That A, there are 100 centimeters in 1 meter, and B, we know that there are 10 millimeters in 1 centimeter. How exactly we draw out our dimensional analysis table now? Well, let's do that. First, we have to make sure to draw out the dimensional analysis table and input our initial value of 10 meters into the very top left. Of course, we want our final answer to be in millimeters. So we know that once everything is said and done, middle millimeters will be found in our unit, which means that it's going to be found in the numerator of one of our conversion factors. 
So let's convert meters into millimeters using our two conversion factors that we found here. First, the only conversion factor that relates meters to anything in this equation is the one meter is to 100 centimeters conversion factor. Additionally, when we come to the conclusion of how exactly to write to the conversion factor, we have to remember that the meters unit must be canceled out. Because if we don't cancel out the meters unit, we won't be able to have our answer in millimeters. Which means that as we input the conversion factor into the dimensional analysis chart, we have to make sure to put meters in the denominator. Which means that as we input it in, we would get something that looks like meters on the bottom with 100 centimeters at the top of our chart. However, in our second conversion factor, once we multiply through everything and get to a step where we cancel out units of meters and meters, we see that there's a centimeters unit in our first conversion factor that hasn't been taken out. And since we don't want our answer to be in centimeters, we have to make sure to cancel that as well. And the, another conversion factor that relates centimeters to our final answer of millimeters is the 10 millimeters is to one centimeter conversion factor. Since we want to cancel out the centimeters, we put the one centimeter conversion at the bottom and the 10 millimeter conversion at the top. Now we can cancel out the units. We can take out the meters because it's found in the numerator and the denominator of the initial value and the first conversion factor. We can take out the centimeters found in the numerator of the first conversion factor, the denominator of the second conversion factor, leaving us with the only unit millimeters. As we then begin to multiply through the entire dimensional analysis chart, we can get a sum down and water down equation as 10 multiplied by 100 multiplied by 10 multiplied by millimeters, which gives us a final answer of 10,000 millimeters, which means that that is an overall answer, 10 meters is equal to 10,000 millimeters. See how we use dimensional analysis in order to quickly and efficiently convert between two sets of units. And although this may seem like an easy conversion, because we know that one millimeter is equal to one thousandth of a meter from prior knowledge, it can, dimensional analysis can also be used for more complex questions. Let's take a look at one now. Let's say that we've entered the wizarding world, and we know that the wizarding currency system is a bit complex, so we do need to use dimensional analysis in order to find out our answer for a problem. Of course, in the wizarding world, we have three main sets of coins. We have the galleon, which is equal to 17 sickles, and a sickle is equal to 29 nuts. Let's take a look at the problem now. Harry the wizard has inherited 37 galleons. Circle the 37 in order to understand how much we have to input into our dimensional analysis table, and 15 sickles. Again, another number that we have to keep track of. And he's inherited all of this from his parents. With your answer in nuts, how much money does Harry have? Again, let's underline the unit of nuts because it shows us what our final answer has to be in. And this is asking us how much money does Harry have? Of course, given the fact that we have our different sort sets of conversions, galleons to sickles and sickles to nuts, and we have two inputs of 37 galleons, 15 sickles, we understand that we might have to use more than one dimensional analysis table in order to find our answer because the input isn't in one unit. It's split up between galleons and sickles. So let's write that down. We have our galleons conversion, and we have our sickles conversion. And we can go through each one of these in order to find out our answer. First, let's build our dimensional analysis charts. We have an input that we need to place. In this case, it would be 37 galleons, or G, and we need to make sure to include our conversion factors as well. Looking at the table up here, we understand that there are 17 sickles in one galleon, and it's the only conversion factor that relates galleons to anything in the first place. And reminded of the fact that we have to cancel out the galleons unit because we want our final answer in nuts, we have to make sure that the galleons unit in our conversion factor is in the denominator, meaning that one galleon would be on the denominator and 17 sickles would be in the numerator. Again, let's write sickles as S in order not to confuse anything. But from here, we can see that once we would cross out the galleons unit, we are left with sickles, which means that we have to take out the sickles unit as well. And we can do that using the second conversion that we find in the conversion factor table up here. We see that there are 29 nuts in a single sickle. And because of the fact that we don't want our answer in sickle and need to have that crossed out, we have to put sickles at the bottom, having one sickle on the denominator and 29 nuts on the numerator. Again, Let's simplify this into k in order to make sure everything isn't as complex and we can easily keep track of our units. 
Now, let's begin to actually find out the quantitative answer to this question. First thing that we need to do is cancel out the units. The galleons is found in the numerator and the denominator of the first conversion factor, so we can cancel that out. The sickles unit is found in the numerator of the first conversion factor and the denominator of the second conversion factor, which means that we can cancel out this unit as well, which gives us an overall equation of 37 multiplied by 17 multiplied by 29 multiplied by nuts. As we input it into our calculator, 37 multiplied by 17 multiplied by 29, we get a final answer of 18,241 nuts. Making sure to include the unit into our answer as well. However, we aren't done with the problem because not only does Harry have 37 galleons, but he also has 15 sickles, which means that we have to convert sickles into nuts as well. Thankfully, this isn't as complex of a conversion because we have a direct conversion from sickles to nuts. But let's draw our dimensional analysis table once again. We have our initial value of 15 sickles, which we put into the dimensional analysis table, and our conversion factor of 29 nuts is to one sickle. We use this conversion in the first process as well, and we're going to use it here again, making sure to put sickles at the bottom in order to cancel out the units. Because of the fact that we finally have nuts in the numerator, which means it's not going to get cancelled out by anything unless we add another conversion factor, we can cross out the sickles units found in the numerator of our initial value and the denominator of our first conversion, which means that we get a final equation that looks like 15 multiplied by 29 multiplied by nuts. And again, all we have to do is pull out a calculator and multiply 15 by 29 to get a final answer of 435 nuts. The final thing that we have to do is add the two values of galleons to sickles and adding 18,241 to 435, we get a final answer of 18,676. As you can see, by going through dimensional analysis, we were able to quickly and efficiently input our values into a conversion factor, use conversion factors to change the values of what we have and get an answer in the correct set of units, making it a quick, efficient, and simple way in order to solve problems that relate different quantities of different units.